I hear all the time that people don't have enough time in their day to read research. So what I'm going to do with this short vlog is summarize a research paper and give you a few tips to take back to apply in your day-to-day -day practice. Okay, so here we go. The first paper I'd like to review is a paper entitled When Progressing Training Loads, What are the Considerations for Healthy and Injured Athletes? Now this paper was recently published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine. When we talk about local tissue loading, what we're talking about is a structure's ability to withstand tissue-specific load. But when we're talking about sport-specific capacity, we're talking about the body's ability to tolerate the demands of competition. This figure shows a schematic of the interplay between local tissue capacity and sport-specific capacity. When we have an injured athlete, let's focus on the bottom left-hand quadrant of this graph. When we have a, an injured athlete, we get a reduction in local tissue capacity, and it's predominantly driven by the pain response. But with that reduction in local tissue capacity, if we can't load effectively, then sport-specific capacity may also drop to the floor. As we progress that injured athlete, typically we we increase local tissue loading during rehab and we introduce sport-specific loading as the athlete gets closer to return to play in this top right-hand quadrant. Now, the, the issue here is that we, we know that progressive loading is key when we're dealing with healthy athletes or whether we're dealing with injured athletes. But load, effective loading or optimal loading doesn't just involve the application of load. It involves consideration of the pain response, tissue vulnerability, the movement pattern of your athlete, the um, expected re-injury risk, the psychosocial resilience of your athlete, the temporal stage of tissue healing, and also the inflammatory response to rehab. All of these factors are considered to optimally load the athlete. So how does optimally loading differ between an injured and an uninjured athlete? Well, let's say that we have an over-focus on sport-specific capacity. And let's use baseball throwing as an example. If we just throw the baseball and we perform no supplementary shoulder external rotation exercises, then potentially the implication is we have an athlete who is fit to perform the sporting activities but with poor local tissue health. Equally, if we have an over-focus over on local tissue capacity, so the majority of training is devoted to improving just local tissue health, for example, isolated hamstring eccentric strengthening without um, sprinting, this, this kind of training, the implication is that we'll have good local tissue health but we're unable to perform the demands of competition. Now the ideal model, the proposed model that I would suggest to is to balance both sport specific and local tissue loading. So even if you have a healthy athlete, you use regular loading of local tissue capacity. You have cycles of local tissue loading. And if you have an injured athlete, your emphasis is on local tissue loading but you don't avoid sport-specific loading. You find a way to maintain sport-specific capacity even when you have your athlete in rehab. Now, the implication here is that you have a, an athlete that has good local tissue health and they're able to perform the demands of competition. So as a, a take-home point, if you're a, a practitioner with, within a clinic or you're working with elite-level athletes, Progressive loading is key, but we need to use patient reported feedback. And it may be that we need to modify our RPE scale slightly to emphasize more the, the local tissue health of, of that particular athlete. So for example, how hard was that exercise on your Achilles or hamstring? So we, we may need to modify the subjective scale. But we also need 
patient reported feedback um, on the pain and and how they're feeling um, in terms of their psychosocial resilience. And it's, it's probably beneficial to gain some measure of external load, knowing that what we can do in the lab is sometime restricted to the lab and, and hasn't actually made its way to the clinic completely at the moment. Effective programs use local tissue loading to maintain local tissue capacity, and this is particularly important for athletes who are currently healthy. But equally, if we want to restore our athlete's capacity and we want to return our athlete to sport safely, then local tissue loading alone is not going to be enough. We also need to think about sport-specific loading. Don't let sport-specific capacity fall to the basement. We want to try and keep that ticking along during rehab as well so that we can restore local tissue health and maintain sport-specific capacity. So hopefully you've enjoyed this first vlog on research relating to the interplay between local tissue and sport-specific loading. If you like the, the video, then please leave a comment um, in the comments below. And if you'd like more information or a copy of the paper, feel free to visit us at gabbitperformance.com. Thanks for listening.